And then God is good. Are you hearing me clearly? Yes. All right, bless you. Um, I just want to thank Pastor Manuel and Pastor Cornwall for inviting me here to share in your local workshop. You have an interest in the gospel of Jesus Christ and we are here always as disciples and ever wanting to learn and we can never say that we, we've got there because there is so much more that we, we can achieve if we endeavor to study the scriptures. So I think it's a wonderful opportunity that you have embraced to develop your, yourself through studying the scriptures and availing yourself that you can make contact with other, other people. And that is so important to, to join forces together, rule out a lot of things and to study the word of God, to approve yourself, to, to be skillful, to know your subject and address it in, in the right way so that your hearers may be able to comprehend and, and have an appetite, uh, uh, an interest of having to have more. Um, I have um, chosen, a, I've condensed this very, very minute, and I've chosen a, a text in the Bible that I think is very much appropriate, and it's very much challenging. And uh, I have a, a connection that I'm going to make from the New Testament and back into the Old Testament. This scripture, I'm more or less taking it out of context, but it is ever so meaningful uh, for us today, because at the conclusion of it from this text, you'll find that it doesn't just represent one sect of the race of people or the sects or, or, or but it represents every, everyone. This text is taken from Romans uh, 11. And I think it's the 29th verse. Right. And it reads that the, the calling and the gifts are irrevocable, or the calling and the gifts are without repentance. And the reason why I say I've taken it out of context, you all are scholars, I suppose. I can I really sense that, and I know some of, some of the faces, because in its context, the man of God is addressing Israel or Jew or Gentile in that sense. And God mercy and God grace, how he, he works thing out to fit everyone in a, in a sense and to show his mercy is not partial. And that is very much attractive for the gospel, very much on the trail of evangelism. And I do feel that um, it suits us very much in this community and as a, a let's put it this way, as a small congregation, I think it's very much challenging in that sense that we could know that what the Bible in its past and in its presence and the future God's whole. But we have a vision that we can peep into the future in that sense and, and have some sort of a understanding of what God is doing. Now, there are some very, very important words there. And I mentioned to you that this is very much um, the 
for the gifts and the calling of God are revocable or without repentance. Let's challenge ourselves in that, in that sense. And when we see the word the repentance from your old King James Version, most of you may have other version, but in that sense, it's really meaning that word I gave irrevocable. What do you think that word really means? Could could you anyone um, just say in your own way what you what you what what you think it means? Say that again. Well, all that, say it in your own way. Anybody, as much as you could say. I want you to, it, probably if you could get the core of this. Um, it, uh, it doesn't have a lot of meaning, but there is a core of it that attracts very much, and, and somebody is able to hit it and target. What man is saying is, 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 is quite right. Come on, anyone. Cannot be withdrawn. Hmm? Can I Say that again. Cannot be withdrawn. Withdrawn. Yeah, that, that, that is a strong word. Yeah, cannot, cannot, cannot be withdrawn. Very, very good. Somebody else. Cannot be removed. I'll, I'll give you a strong word. It, it's not possible to change or to undo. It's not possible to change or to undo. And um, we show a little bit of a weaknesses there concerning the scriptures. Let me remind, remind all of us here that the scripture speaks for itself. There are times we try to elaborate too much and makes too much. It's as if you had a, a nice juicy orange. You get the first squeeze, it tastes so well, and you really enjoy it. You squeeze again, it doesn't taste as well and sweet as the first squeeze. And you get that understanding. I'm speaking to a grown up class, I don't need to go further. And there's some people still squeezing more, and then it lose the taste. Right? The scriptures speaks for itself. And that's what the Bible says. Search the scriptures. If you think you have life. It is written in the scriptures. Devil tempted him, man shall not live by bread alone, it's in the scripture. Jesus quoted it by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. And so the, he is saying that um, in, this, in, in, this, in this charge here that the principles are in that sense. Sometimes we, 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 we stretch this thing out, out so much that what is written in the scriptures, God, in another sense, we could, the script, he's almost, the script, it's, all, it's almost sworn it, as an oath that it cannot be broken. And I want you to take a note of this, that the earnest of, in this text is upon God and not on you. The earnest is on God, not on you. And that's why I use the word probably, he swears day, or he took an oath. He would not alter his word, he would not undo it. It is just as it is. Now, <laughs> I happen to, to um, 
to look for a character in the Bible that had problem with the word as a messenger that he was sent out to do and to do with a king or a leader. And he sort of struggled with this. And this scripture is to do with Balaam and Balak. Balak, he's tired with God, God's people. Don't you feel that way sometimes? He wants to get rid of them. The way they occupy, they should go somewhere else. That's taken from, I think, in, in, in Numbers, um, Numbers, um, I didn't, let me see, that's taken. Numbers 23, 19 and 20. It reads like this. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. I've just, take, I've just quoted for you Paul speaking in Romans, the, the gifts and the calling are without repentance. And there is a strong connection there. The calling, the gift, everything. There is a strong connection in the Old Testament. He's saying here that, that nor no, no, a son of man that he should repent. He has said, and will he not do it? Or has he not spoken? And will he not make good? This was the message he had. Behold, I receive a command to bless, and I cannot reverse it. Dare I say to you, the word cannot, you cannot undo it. You cannot add to it. The challenge sometimes in in ministry, when we deal in probably with zeal and a bit of anxiety, especially probably young ministers, genuine calling, have a real thirst, and that is so important. But there are times, sometimes, a, a little bit of too much traditional tra tra offers, we make, we sort of a tip the balance. And somehow we miss the real mark. And that is easy to overstep. As much as we, we have the calling and the gift, and God would back that up. But we still have to be subject. When Paul was speaking, probably the gifts of the, not the throne gifts in the sense where probably you may come to Ephesians, but the gifts of the Spirit that works to beautify the whole church, to make it lovely, and everybody is part of it. You know, he was, he was speaking there in, the, in, in that sense, and he evaluated and he, in that sense and put them in order. How we are to control ourselves and, 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 and to catch that balance. And, and then we have to understand that whatever teaching or ministry in the sense of uh, prophesying through the preaching of the word of God uh, 
in whatever way. We have to catch a balance and we've got to understand your job and my job, all of us. It's the weakest that is in our midst become the most important and the most challenged for the man of God. We often say the strength of a chain is the weakest link. I used to ride motorcycle. I had a BSA. And the pulley is a chain. And sometimes if the chains snap, and uh, there are times I always used to check on it and look to see where the weak link is because I could rivet it a little bit more and make sure it's there. Because if it snapped on a journey and everything, you could have problem. So you have to pay in ministry, ministers, all of us, pay very much attention whether it's an out ministry, we can be more boisterous and forward. And that is quite all right. And that ministry, as you know, stems under the, 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 the charge of, of, uh, of the evangelists into outreaches and, and challenge and so on. To, and, and that is what you, probably more or less is the lifeline and the, and the real firework of the church. It is said out where the sinners are. The, the Peter and, the, and I'm not going to, I'm going to stick to this in that sense, but they were fishing and they didn't catch nothing. So they had to launch out and go out where it is. We sort of get young ministers get very much comfortable because they are more or less in the church, whether they are occupying, they call in. I, I says here, the gift and the calling. I want you to stick to those things. Whether they are occupying, they call in, that works with the gifts of vice versa, they must know this. Because both of these, the gift and the calling, they are very genuine and God will stand by that because he cannot alter that. He won't reverse it. He won't undo it. And sometimes when we have a problem or not, we create that ourselves. And we, we may even instructing other people, but we can be the main, main problem. And we, it's difficult to see that within, especially within young ministry. Because I, I made more than 101 mistakes. And when I look back, how silly I was, how little I knew about this big book, and I thought I knew it. And even up to now, these words are very much common to me. This is a very big book. And you can't just comprehend it straight away like that. And the more we, more or less, as I said, stay, your best guideline is the scripture. So he, get to, he had to know that. And although he was speaking about Balak and Balaam, try to bribe and to come in with the man of God, yet God would uphold and stand by his word. And in that scripture, we learn that God did something very much miraculous because God cannot lie. He's, he, he, said, he, he said so. He's not a man or the son of man to, to lie. You cannot, in, Paul mentioned, we cannot instruct him. So 
So we were told in there that God had to use an ass as a dumb, a dumb an ass so that to put the words in his mouth so that the over-anxious and thirsty Balaam, you know, having that little bit too much and not sensing what's going on. We can miss the mark, miss the target, waste material, waste time, too long, too short, and all the time we start of a not sensing that our position and the one that are responsible for it is God, or if we bring it to what we have today, that is the dispensation of today, the church today, is the work of the Spirit. The work of the Spirit. Within these three major dispens dispensations, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they took their responsibility and each and every one of them stood and whatever they stood for with the agreement, no one could alter it. David mentioned that word, I think in Psalms 89. God would not alter his word and he would keep his promise. He would not. The promise he made, he would not alter it. Now, I happen to have a very important scripture. All scriptures are important, but these scriptures you now are, are level with you. I haven't gone into any studies or do this or that. My, my probably 60 years ago, over 60 years, I started at 15 in, in ministry now. I sort of uh, use my little experience. I, I'm not what I, I'm honest with you, not what I am used to do. I'm not a young man. In, 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 in next month, uh, on the 9th of um, December, I will be 83 years of age. Wow. Right? So uh, I, I want to just level up there with you. And th th there are sometimes I may stumble and I'm not able to, you understand, because the faculty is the memory. But I'm so grateful to God. Amen. From that early start until now, his grace, his mercy. It was the grace of the living, the grace of the gospel, the grace of the miracles, the grace of everything works with grace. Right. To preach is grace. Right. To go out to heal the sick is the grace of, of the healing the sick. Right. But the, uh, the, the flamboyant boys today and the quick fix and everything, they just sort of a, make it easy and to take the whole flavor and the whole substance out of it. We really don't see that faith working in real action to produce, in, in, to, to come away from the shadows and see what is happening in the substance. Here is another scripture. Move this one. 2 Timothy, chapter 3. I'm going to just read a core of a verse. It's a, it's a many things, but you Bible students already. And never take you backward, always take you forward. It's something I'm, I'm very much concerned about, the level up in church today through the teaching of the gifts that is given to the church. 2 Timothy 3. I'm going to read verse 2 Timothy 3. I'm going to read verse 16. Again, it's to do with the scripture. Here how it reads here. All scripture. I won't elaborate on that to waste your time. All means of 
Sometimes we'll bring people down so after we say, oh, we've gone all over the place. You must stop it. You've got to. Your pupils don't know what you mean. Some of them will squinch. I've got it. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. You could start underlining now. What, why are these scriptures given? Who gives it? How it come by? And what it is for? How must I use it? Where must I use it? What must I use it for? How often must I use it? Where should I take it? Who should I share these scriptures in? If it is of God and I'm giving it, or does that does I see any profit in any gain in it? Profit means gain. You go into business, and if you're having problem and, and, and you and you and, and you think you're losing, you're thinking of one thing: How long would I continue or shut down? You've seen it on the high street. Big mergers are just you no. Know, hear, hear what this man is saying to this young preacher. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine. You have to underline that when you if you're going to preach this. You, you got to. It's profit. It, it brings some gain. Is these scriptures are not to be waste, and you're not seeing something that is happening. If the calling and the gifts are genuine with you, God holds the responsibility of the Holy Spirit in today. The church dispensation of today operates under that. The Trinity works together, but it is His his reign, his time, his dispensation, <clears throat> until he would say one day, as the rest say, it is finished. Reproof. You have to underline that. <laughs> For correction. You have to underline that. For instruction. You have to underline that. In righteousness. Now, the earnest on these scriptures, in our preaching, we have to be so careful, all of us. The earnest is with those that are called into ministry. Did you hear me? You handling the scripture. Don't just throw it to the congregation and you think, you are the one that is handling the business. You're in position to use the scriptures and how you use the scripture, where you use the scripture, why you use the scripture. Is there any result in when you use the scripture? Are you seeing anything? These things worry me a lot. And these are thought in, in ministry as has always been the senior here after the that a pastor Alia. This is something I would speak to my associate pastor, Tom is here. We used to have Clement in jail years and years and then we, we, nobody knows we get together, but I, I'm not, you know, uh, I make, I'm making room for, in that sense and, and everything like that, but still I have to more or less still do as much work and, and everything and, uh, and yet, uh, you look and you see him, good preaching, genuine. Uh, that is between the individual and, uh, and, uh, and God. Good preaching is not just the answer. Congregation love to be titled. And when they feel something, it suits them. Oh, there's nothing wrong about it. But that is just here, head business. It doesn't come down a little bit. 
16 inches to 40 or to the heart. Because the minute they step up, or the minute you step on them, they are so near the skin, step out, step on them. You get a rebound. You get a very negative way of that individual. But he's writing to the man. And verse 17 tells him why, why are these scriptures so important? Young ministers, both male and female, in the kingdom of God, they're neither male nor female in that sense. Your challenge is to stay with the scriptures. See what it has to say. You're able to say a few things, all right, back up as we say here, but it's based on the scripture. Hear what he said, say to the man, verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. He doesn't send you out there to work without the tools. He does not send you out there to work without the tools. Neither does he send you out there to buy the tools. You hear me? Yes. But he furnished he supplied the tools because he expects you to do a good job. <laughs> Amen. He expects us to do a good job. And the good job is, in some cases, you have to stand by some teaching through the scriptures. You would have to be thoroughly inspired through the leading. A sense beyond your thinking that motivates or pulsates between you. And you're almost sensing and very sensitive what is happening through using the scriptures. Or you know, you know exactly. Because the response in using the scriptures and the response with your hearers and your listeners, you share a conviction as they share a conviction. You sense a, a, a dynamic move within your very spirit. And you know more of your own self to do what you want, but you will do something to, 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 to challenge of what the scripture is saying and its result from the scripture to man. He's not a man or the son of man that he would tell a lie. He sent you to bless. I cannot but otherwise bless and I wouldn't curse. I wouldn't chase them out. But he says, bless, and I'm carrying the blessing. I'm the vessel of it. And there, I'm prepared not to go your way and to do what you so require of me. But God has sent me to bless. The people would be settled. It's God and not man. And he has spoken. And he would bring it to pass. And that's a wonderful challenge that 
that the man of God be perfect. That word perfect there means, in that sense, does not mean sinless perfection. Hear what I say. It does not mean sinless perfection. The only one person that qualifies for that is Jesus. Mark the perfect man. But it means, in a sense, we are gaining maturity. We have a better understanding of knowing what we should know and what we shouldn't do. And we know we won't do because we know what to do and we know what we know. Do you catch that? So that is what he said. I like it. Thoroughly furnish unto all good work. Now, what would you say that word means? Reproof in the scripture. Then. What do you think reproof mean then? Because when you see two words come like they together, reproof, correction, you might say, why would they want to use these two words there? Because you, you might tell me, well, to correct somebody, he almost like, reproof, correction. What, why, why does he challenge the young preacher, Tim, in that kind of way like that? Through the scripture, use the scriptures to do that. What do you think that means? I want an answer from you now. Hmm? She said reaffirm. Yeah. Solid word. <laughs> Solid word. Solid word. It, that was more in there, isn't it? No. no. Solid word. No. Oh, give me somebody else to give me another solid word. Give me another meaning there again, somebody. Because sometimes we show it by action. Severe warning. See, not the, yes, all that, that's a good word. But one of the things that just you, that, that, that the person will know when, look, um, Ezekiel was to set his feet like a, when the people see him, they know God is vexed. Well, Paul was writing in Hebrews there um, with, with, with the early church in, in, in the wilderness in that sense, from one, from one captivity of freedom and into a literal promised land in the sense and we going on to a heavenly, a divine heavenly blessing in that sense. But they were literally in, 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 that, in, that, in, in that case. But he, 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 he was saying that all the generation that left, all did not God get there. And he says, God was so in his wrath, he, 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 he swore that they would not enter. That's the reproof. He vexed with it. Good word, Maury, all of you. So uh, he, he, uh, he, 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 what a way he shares with the young man in that sense. And what a far, we need that so much. I think that's the Lord is helping me. I'm fumbling here and there, but to help all our young ministers and, and every kind in, in one little way, I bless the Lord that to, to, to really see that they're developing a, 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 a basically on the true teaching of the Bible in that sense. And, and, and they are not, Paul was mentioning, to Timothy that good teaching and, and, and remaining trusting and faithful to God, he's able to save himself, others that he preached to, and also save himself. It simply means, when you read things like that, you could, you, it tells you straight, I can be a preacher, <laughs> save a lot of people, but I could get lost and end up in hell. Right. Yeah, we, 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 see, we don't see, you must able some, that's why I say, if you squeeze the scripture too much, you just sometimes turn it around. Sometimes it's in a nutshell. Sometimes it's in reverse, in that sense. 
Jesus was preaching one time. I, I think we preached that the other day in the church with, 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 with where they brought the man and they lowered him down and uncovered the roof. And, 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 and the critics that were there, when he says, um, um, rise up and <coughs> son, um, rise up and, uh, and, they, uh, and then they begin to, uh, you know, um, that son, that sin be forgiven. That's the first thing that he said, thank you very much. And they say, but, but who else could forgive sin only God? And, and Jesus put it another way. I'll tell you, amen. All right, then, you don't like what I said? I'm going to say something yet. Is it easier for you to believe it or to see what's going to happen? Son, rise up and take up your bed and walk. Hmm? Isn't that wonderful? Hmm. So it's not the word only, but also the action and the act of the word. And that's why we have the acts of the apostles. You want to make it easy, you see. It's all the action that takes place with the disciples that went forth to preach it. The action of the, of the preaching of the word of God through the disciples become the acts of the apostles. It's all to do with action. Is all what taking place and every kind. They're not just sitting in Jerusalem. They tried it, but he didn't work. But we're not going there. God, God, again, as I said, a calling. They had it and the gifts. So God will do something. And sometimes some of the things that we we go through and and uh, and we blame in other people and many things. Most most of most of the problem is our own self. And there are times some of these problems, nobody is able to get you out of it. You have to get your own self out. I'm telling you that. I'm seriously telling you that. I've been down the road. Nobody. Pastor, pray for me. This pray, sister, pray for me. Yes, amen. Nobody, amen. Yeah. And God will wait on you because he will not take back his word. Yes. You, you, you have a genuine calling, you make a lot of mess up your life and feel everything, God still is going to wait on you. And anytime you're ready, because if he didn't do it yesterday, you're going to do it today. And if he didn't do it today, he still holds the future. He says, I'm waiting in the future until you're ready. And anytime you're ready, I am there because I'm yesterday, today, and I'm always there. Here it is now. I want, I want to crawl, I want to run you up on one more scripture. Um, yes. Um, and what, how would you, um, um, in, in that, what's your definition in that sense, um, inspiration? From that, what would you say that will, that mean? As you young people, in because some people, uh, 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 you know, I I know I'm, I'm in, uh, this, I'm inspired and every kind. Of, well, it's from the word inspired. But what would you think that word really mean? What what would that? How you how what sort of feelings in a physical way? through the spirit man that you know what you know. How would you say that word, what it means? These are things that I, I go through, you know, and, so, uh, I, and I vindicate my standing as strong as ever, even though with my 101 weaknesses, I know I'm genuine call of God. I don't have to go into a library. I don't have to do this. I don't, I don't have to go for tape. I, I, I don't know what. I, I just come here and, I, and I'm just, and I'm just, I, I don't. I am God's man and leave me alone. And God will deal with whatever problem that I bring upon myself. I know that. You've got to know that. So what do you think that, what do you think that when, when, when we use the word um, inspired in it? Um, uh, hmm? Yes, that, that's part of it. Yes, that's part of it. But um, um, can, uh, can, can, um, can't you um, find something? Um... Yeah, that's part of it. All right, then. It's, uh... 
Well, it, it all comes through that in that sense. You will get that through that um, inspiration that you're going through. You will get revelation. You will get insight, which is understanding. Yes, sister? Hmm? Well, that's part of it, yes, to do things. I'll tell you what, it, it, I think it um, is, 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 is one of the um, Shakespeare, Shakespeare play, um, um, where I, um, uh, when he say, stimulate the, sim the simus, uh, oh gosh, I'll get so backward now. Eh? <laughs> Shot was on. Um, one of, one of his play is a way he stimulate the sinews and, and the, the blood and everything. Huh? Midsummer dream. Amen. Amen. Midsummer dream. Amen. Midsummer dream. Uh, well, all right. It's a stimulation of mind to spirit. Yes. It's getting you, it's getting you, it's getting, it's getting you there. And, and, and that helps you to activate for action. Repeat that again, it's what? Yeah. It works to, for, because you, Paul was writing in Romans day, you know, seven and eight about the mind and the spirit and how they work and how he was having problem. But when he get to get it, know how it works. He writes in Romans 8, there is no condemnation on me no more. I'm loose, I'm set free. But I'm fighting in Romans 7, but I, 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 I'm going to come true. I keep praying about it. And when he get the release, he speaks about it. Amen. And I'm not condemned no more. My mind is not, amen, amen. It's working there. But you have to transform it into the spirit realm. Right. Right. Uh, 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 and I, I mentioned a word day, amen. Once you get it work, you have a credit card, I have somebody, they give you a number and everything, you can't use it yet. They said to you, activate the card. And then you could use it. You activate in your body, amen. That stimulation come, is the time now to push that card in the machine and you'll start drawing what you have to draw. Oh, bless the Lord. <laughs> All right, uh, and then I, I want you to really understand, get to um, these words, um, and when, 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 an, an, another thing that we have to understand is uh, when he speaks about the, the doctrine, the, it's, uh, it, it, it's to do with teaching, and that teaching in that sense is to do teaching to, uh, of church, principle we need that that other, other, otherwise we we struggle with certain things very much because we struggle with marriage we struggle with homosexual which we lesbian we struggle with a lot of things and um, how dressing and all kind of kind of a thing we need amen the, the teaching and the doctrine in the sense of the church principle and that's why he was saying to do those things the reproof amen and all and, uh, yeah, yes amen amen deal with those things seriously and, and, and everything like that and then I have, I've had um, um, in in that sense um uh, and and and, and um, a lot uh, a lot of people again sometimes they 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 make so many error in preaching and every kind of thing. Well, we do God, God wings at that when we speak about gifts. Speak about gifts. How much you have have a gift into the ministry? Let me see in the lifting hand. How many people here that have gifts in the ministry? Oh, all right, Lord, wonderful. One, two, three, four, five, gift. How, how, would you, how, how, how would you define that on, uh, your, your, in that sense? What would you say a gift is? Everybody should just jump and say that quick. Huh? No, uh, 
I don't, uh, you, you could say, I want, what, what, you, what you think a, a gift is? You're going to, Christmas is coming, what a <laughs> gift is? <laughs> don't, look for the simple, don't force the word. I, I speak to Carl and a lot of times than that and Manuel, um, in of, don't force the word. Just look at it. A gift is something free. Free. For God so loved the world that he gave a gift. Don't walk too hard with the scriptures. I often say that is where we may. The scriptures speak for itself. I, when I'm preaching off and on in the church, well, I don't know in that sense, but I would always say, yeah, you, you know, that um, um, don't force the text and don't prolong it too much and, and, and everything like that. A gift, uh, or, 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 and, and it's also a special ability of power given. I had to use that because we studying, there are certain things I leave our dictionary and through my own reading from the scriptures and everything because it's a special, there's some part in the Bible thing that they say that Paul did special miracles for that, that having worn handkerchiefs and different kind of thing from him, apart from this, his body, he, he shared that around and that brought special miracle. So it's a special gift with special power. Woo! And that's your challenge as young, as ministers here, and, and for all of us, that, that you've got it. You've got to know that. And if you don't activate it, you may try it the first time and it didn't work. But you do it again. Consistency is very, very important. And that's how we almost judge people. In that we, we are here to do that if they are right within the scriptures. Oh, I'm a prophetess, I'm this, and I'm a prophet. Every, every. They are wonderful in the Bible. But you, you have to genuinely know that these gifts are really genuine. And you know that because you see the way they operate, how the person uses it, how they operate, and you see the results of these gifts. So it's a wonderful challenge. And now I want to just take you to my new scripture there that I think in Ephesians, um, is it four? Yes. <coughs> Peter, Ephesians four. I'm going to operate on you in two. This, um, I'm not over the time. Huh? You've got, uh, got question and answers. Question and answers. All right. I'll go do that in Ephesians 4. Um, right. Ephesians 4. Wherefore you said when he has sent, from verse 8. Where, from verse 8, I'm going to read a few verses and I'm going to question you. And, and uh, wherefore, when, when he said, when, when he ascended upon high, he led captivity captives and gave gifts unto men. Amen. Where, uh, you, know, you, you know that verse of Scripture 8. You know what happened there. What happened? He led captivity cap. He led captivity and he led them captive. What had happened there? Hmm? Hmm. <laughs> huh? What, what, what happened? Huh? He go down. So Hades, don't. Hades, yes. 
And from the old scripture of who they, whom was hell day, they saw there in the streets of Jerusalem people walking. Did you read that in, your, in the gospel? He's a, he resurrects the dead. All power was given to him, brought him, that no one could take it away from him. And the, and, and, and the minute, amen, that touch there, oh boy. And that happened in the old scripture just the same. I think, what do you call it, was bearing, um, come on, Tom, and um, is it in, uh, and, and, and the spirit of uh, bearing, and it, 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 in the grave, it touched. Uh, which one, Elijah? Yes. And he, wake up. The bones of the dead. The bo yes, bone, yes, thank you. Right. Now, um, now, verse 9, now, now that he ascended, that is, but that he also descended up, down, first into the lower parts of the earth. Oh, you went everywhere. And up, up. He that de descended is the same also that ascend ascended up far above all heaven, that he might fill all things. What do you think he has to fill? <laughs> fill all things. It looked like if some things didn't done in it. Then you really complete in it. How would you how would you go through that scripture? What are that that verse then? What would you, well come on scholars, I'll just then come and I want to hear what you have to say then. Mm -hmm. Yes, in that in that sense. But I often say when we speak about promise, sometimes we make such a little error there. Uh, there are times because promises are not just easy to fulfill, like how we just just say it like that. Because a promise is conditional, and a promise has to be kept by two people, by a contract with two agreement or four, however you want to. And the thing about it, God will always keep his side. But will I keep my side? Will our sister keep her side? It is conditional. And an oath is on a higher order where God alone takes responsibility and he releases you and I from that. And you have no, no problem. God is the one to, to, sorry, is to take the problem on his own self. But he says, I read it in, in, in Romans day. He will not, he will not undo his word. He would not, he would not reverse it. He would not cancel it. He stick to his word. And when, when God made promise with Abraham, they, he had to prove it. But when God takes an oath, he doesn't ask you at all to prove nothing. He say, I know you will. Because that's what you are. Right. And the next, um, no, okay then. Um, well, you, you, you see, he had to, die. look, he had to, he had to preach, he had to teach, he had to heal, he had to die, he had to resurrect, bury, resurrect in order to fulfill the whole of the New Testament. There were things that has not yet been done. He didn't finish it in Calvary. He must go to Hades, release the dead. He must rise again. The promises that he made, amen, to the disciples, they were not yet fulfilled, amen. He had to, and then, yeah, the one that goes down, he went up, and then you would hear, yeah, he led captivity captive now, and he gave, what he gave to men? No, I'm going to very, you may find me very controversy there, Anthony. Who did he give the gift to? Men. Come on, women, women and men, he has to be give it to men. men. Do you struggle with that? No. Why? No, no, in the sense, uh, I'm wrong there. In the sense that we have um, ministry into the sense of men, 
women, both on both sexes, with the gifts, the, cons the, con the, the, con the constructive or gifts, that is the gifts that build the church, build. Yeah, yeah. you can't build this building here if you don't have bricklayers, carpenters, plaster. You can't just start speaking in tongues and giving, and you don't have no way to do it. You can't do that. You just can't do that. But that is the constructive work of the ministry, and that is building. Amen. And he gave, so what happened? What he did? He gave gifts to men to, men, to build the work. And number one, who is the first one he gave gifts to? Paul writing. Apostle. Secondary. Second. Third. The fourth. How many gifts you think are there to operate in the church? In the in the running in, in the church. Hmm? How many gifts we have to scripture? You read there. Pastors and teachers. Let me tell you that this. The pastor is a teacher. The teacher also is a pastor. Pastor and teacher. No. He, he gives that. And you, none of us here can make possible we do ordination and make anybody that. The calling. That's the, again where I went back in, in Romans. That's the, I'm going to take it. I said I'm going to take it out of contact, context. And the gifts are of God. And it's irrevocable. You cannot undo it. You cannot change it. God alone is responsible for that. No, he gave gifts unto men. Nobody tells me this. I put it my way that I sense I get a bit of a, I'm not going to tell you a revelation, but some insight from the word of God. Because sometimes we make a little bit of an error within revelation and insight. Oh, I get a revelation and get, uh, we do that. We must put everything in its context, in its right place, and where it's relating to that subject, how it is addressing in the scriptures. And if we could keep in line with that, then we don't mix everything together. Now, that is a constructing part of the building. And as I said, no, you could build this church. Now, what, how much are the, uh, what are the gifts now to operate inside the church when we come to church worship church? These gifts should stay in the church from the Bible. Hmm? Hmm? Uh, no, I'm not. the throne gifts. I'm not talking about the gifts. The, 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 the gifts to work. Hammer and chisel, paintbrush, labor. I ain't speaking about nice things. How much are they? Here we have five minus four. Yeah, look, look in 1 Corinthians 12. Um, I wonder how far that would be, if I have it at all. Um. Hmm? All right, I know I, I could recite it, and I know it by heart what it is. But um, see, verse 28 is it. My, my, my thought just coming on that. Verse 28? What does it read? Read it in your Bible. Somebody. 
second prophet, the first teacher, the miracles, with the gift of healing, of helping, of guidance. All right. We could stop there for. Uh, what, what do we see there for the construct, constructing gifts? To construct, to build the church. Hammer and chisel and mason and carpenter. What we see there? You just read it in the scripture. How much do you see? Hmm? You see three. Speak with Three. Which one is not in the church today? That we have more often everywhere. It's, it's working, but you, you'll understand where it work more and we do it the wrong way around. Which one is left out there? No? Hmm? Huh? Which one is left out? No? No? Pastor? See your thing, man? <laughs> All right, <Anna. laughs> you get it? <laughs> now, I told you in the throne gift, he gave pastors and teachers. But the teacher would operate far much in that sense, more active in the church. That's why we have, a, we got, we have too much pastoring sometime in the church and little teaching. Because everybody wants to be, say that a shepherd is in charge of the flock and every guy. We've got too much. So when he, when he let, he, he give gifts. Take your dip. Put them there. Fold them up. Tom, come and take one. You look at it. Boy, I'm a pastor. Oh, brother, take one. I'm an evangelist. And how did he put it? How did, how did he set it out? How did he do it? In how, what is the order of it? No, I, no, I want you to read in the scripture what is the order of it? No, no, you're not. These to get first, second, third. Don't come away from the scripture. Yeah, you mark. Yes, it's, and then, yes, don't come away from the scriptures. That's where we move, we miss the balance a bit, and people get so thirst and, 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 and they, they shiver away. He says, Look, we need order in the church. That's what, and I'm going to tell you first in the church, it will be the apostle. Second, he says, It's going to be the prophet. Third, he says, it's going to be the teacher. The evangelist is not there. The pastor is not there. For pastor and teacher, and I told you the pastor can be, in, in that sense, the teacher, as well as the pastor. That's what you, how much you got there? Um, first, you marketing your scripture. <laughs> yes, yeah, let me see, I didn't. Second is prophet and teachers. One Corinthians twelve. No, we'll come to that. It doesn't come. We'll come to that. Verse um, one Corinthians twelve. God has set in, in the old King James. It would say, and God had set some in the church first. What that word said mean, you think it means? Even though you're reading the new translation, it, it will even help you what it means because they were, hmm? It explain, but, but in your own way, why you would say that mean? Said. Said. In, in the context here, what, from the scripture. Now, if, if, if I had employed a stonemason or some body building a house or something and they lay a brick here huh? and then and then it all others build on it but it's there all the time yes, yes. Huh? Yes. it's there all the time we go back to romans with god 
the calling and the gifts are Irre irrevocable or without repentance. It doesn't change uh, um, this way. Oh, no. uh, uh, you know, we have so many uh, set in, today, uh, in, in that kind of a, in that way, but from the small congregation like this, you will get more of a, the, 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 the genuine teaching from, from, from the Bible because some people are defending something so much, they have to slip away and, uh, from the truth to, in order to keep it and to hold it because it become a multi-billion business and all kind of a thing like that and they can't be too honest with you and every kind of thing like that and everything but, but we don't get paid we have to make sure whatever we do is the Lord is taking care of us and we have to make sure we make our calling and election show amen we don't want to preach to others and we ourselves lost it Paul was when he said a castaway or you, you know what that means in that in, in, in that sense so then he, 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 he's saying in the church it is God that did that to Jesus, in a sense, these are the works that wasn't complete in that sense. He, he descended and he went up and he still, there's other works to be done. And when he finished that, then the, the Holy Spirit would come after some, uh, 10 days before that could happen because there's still work to, to be done. So he did that first. Secondly, No, prophet. 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 Yes. Second prophet. Yes. How do you. <laughs> this one is tough. When we say prophet in the church, how do we. How to put it? I don't. God did that. I don't, because how do we um, recognize. A genuine prophet in the church. What are we looking for? What are we looking for? Remember, stay in the scriptures. The gifts and the calling are without irrevocable. They are without repentance. Balaam, um, Balaam had said, "Amen." That, 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 that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he, he should repent. What God has instructed me to do is to bless, and I cannot do otherwise. I reverse God's word. I am going to bless. Bless God. He's irrevocable. God doesn't make a, a, a mistake to say he, 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 he doesn't he change his mind. I, I said to you, you could have wonder you could have been in ministry and causing the most kind of a problem if he had to take a drag you and bring you somewhere and until you come to yourself and you you, you understand amen because it is not man amen he said he's not a man a man would lie and change his mind it's god that said to me to bless so what about this prophet now hmm? What you say? Oh, you said it. It is the F R U I. It's the fruit. It's the fruit. And that comes from Jesus teaching and your you shall it is the fruit. What are the highest gifts in the Bible that are seen? Seen gifts. Use hard, I tell you. It's still the fruits. <laughs> you could have tell me tongues, prophesying. It's still fruit. Don't they say they have all the gifts and many things? And when you don't hear down the road, they say, "Mouth then tell a blasphemy or lie or did something so wrong." You say, "My, I didn't. That man that could preach so much, he doing nothing like that." <laughs> When you hear that, when you hear that man preach, you quiver. It's the fruit. And that was Jesus' teaching. Amen. And what's the highest level of teaching in the Bible? That's that. Right through the, the highest level of teaching in the Bible. Hmm? No. Uh, in that sense, no. I want, what is it? 
who did it, the highest level preaching in the Bible, level of teaching in the Bible. Jesus, where did he do it? Where did he do it? No, no. Where you, Jesus did it? Where did he do it? Where, where, where we find that level? All right, I'll start Matthew 5, 6, and 7. The Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitude. Keep those things, please. Keep those things. That's what would make you, give you doctrine, some teaching based upon the Bible, which is truth. And we would call that, it is the truth of the gospel. That needs no help or needs no hand. Well, we're almost there in it. Uh, oh, that's a lovely picture there. <laughs> uh, one, one, um, two more things here, just to get you. I hope, I think I've gained, I think I've gained your interest. Hmm? Yes, well, I'm stopping now, yeah. Then he said, you, you talk about miracles and gifts and because those things are put into the right place. They're all over the place. That's why he had to say, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all, and, and so on. Then, then he said, but covet honestly the best gift, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. When you read things like that, you don't just, you say, boy, am I not missing out? And you know what he's, you know the gift he is asking to covet. I think, which one? Hmm? I'll show you a more excellent way. Uh, uh, with all of that, I say, there's a better one. You, you better have covered that one and won that one. Hmm? What's the name of it? It's a fruit in the Bible. L O. Put your hands together. Did you, did you, did you enjoy that? Yes. Yeah. Do you want any more next time? Yes.